Welcome, welcome. My name is Solange Ellen and I'm recording this little True News update from Madrid Nation, Sandy Creek. So, mm, we'll, we'll let go of the, the fraud names for where we are. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for helping to keep me free. Um, yeah, so I went to the court to be in support of Takara, really. Um, Donna was appearing in the youth court in Adelaide uh, to hopefully be heard and have Takara return to her. And I just wanted to be present because, uh, you know, protecting the children is the most important thing. It's the biggest trauma that's going on across the whole of planet Earth, everywhere the children are being stolen. Um, and, and right here, you know, in, in Ghana Nation, which is Adelaide, and Nadjari Nation, where the babies have been being stolen from the original people since the slave system got here. They've been being, you know, stolen and raped and tortured and sacrificed and just absolute pure evil that has gone on for far, far too long. And it's that same evil that is controlling the Department of Child Protection currently. And that is evidenced by the fact that they are still holding Takara against lawful instruction, against divine and natural law. Uh, and it was just in my heart to, to be present. And my family was very fearful because they knew that the you know, the fraud court that I had notified that I wouldn't be attending because they have no lawful sovereignty and are actually just a for-profit corporation that I have no contract with, I issued a piece of paper to say that they were going to give themselves permission to abduct me from the street again should I, you know, think that I was a free woman and wanted to leave my home and stand in the street or sit, and sit out the front of the youth court peacefully as the case was. Um, and yeah, well, that is what happened. So I went, I sat peacefully and a big gaggle of SAPOL officers came and abducted me against my will again and took me down to the Adelaide Watch House and yeah, I had to, you know, go through their, their whole process again, you know, what they want with forcing you to um, engage with their court, forcing you to engage with their duty solicitor, forcing you to engage with the judge. And at least yesterday I got to speak to the judge myself. So I did have a conversation with the duty solicitor um, just to basically, you know, explain the truth um, about the lawful sovereignty of the First Nations and the jurisdiction of law that I am a free woman and that, that that's just the truth. Um, I, you know, follow the golden rule. That's what, you know, this is. I'm under divine and natural law, really operating on conscience to be of service to humanity as best I can. Um, and I'm under no obligation to be in a contract or do any business with any of these fictional corporations that are claiming to be the law that are actually trespassing here on the sovereign First Nation soil. That's the truth. I didn't, you know, like, I'm not strong at the moment. I'm really weak. I was weak before I even got there. So it was just a big trauma. And I was just honest with everyone about that. You know, from the time that they abducted me again, I was like, I can't do it again. Like, please. But I had to beg pretty much. It was a, there was a lot of begging and there was also crying. So sorry about that, Louis. <laughs> um, I meant to be like composed. I wasn't composed. It was not cool at all. Um, but yeah, really all of the powers that be conspired. Um, so by the grace of our divine creator and the presence and the protection of the ancestors 
the both of this sacred land and all of my own ancestors. Um, the elders, the lawmen and women locally here in Ghana and Madhuri Nation and across all First Nations and the collective will of the honestly informed people. That's a really part, an important part of the, the magic of the real law. You know, the real law is that the honestly informed will of the people needs to be followed, you know, that um, there are no uh, dictators or special authorities that hold power over all the rest of us, you know, other than our divine creator who, who created us all and, you know, the truth of earth law, um, you know, respect and responsibility. We the people, we the people are the ones that have to live the law, you know, have the proper respect, take the responsibility. And so that is the collective will of the people, collective will of the honestly informed people and the discernment of humanity, the discernment and humanity um, of the system workers. So say poll, the correctional services officers and the judge, they all, you know, apart from abducting me again in the first place, which was, you know, really unlawful and unnecessary and traumatic, but, you know, they're doing their job, what they think their job is, and they're following the system that they think is our system, when in fact it's not actually our system, it's the banking cartel system, you know, it belongs to this little group of cult members that think that they own humanity and our earth, the ones that are trying to depopulate us all currently and get us enslaved into their digital beast system. Um, but in reality, the system uh, is made up of the people within the system and they always have discernment. And so, you know, it really was all of, all of these different pieces coming together to decide that it's actually in all of our best interests to not put me in a cage again because I'm a peaceful woman standing up for free freedom for humanity and for real child protection for our children, you know, which is what I had to talk to everyone about. So I'm exhausted because I was having, you know, peace talks under duress. <laughs> Let's call it peace talks under duress. It was quite stressful. But I think, you know, we made some progress. So basically the outcome was I did um, sign bail papers under duress and, uh, you know, what the corporate court is um, requiring of me under threat of financial penalty. Uh, so they made me promise $750 and to have a um, guarantor, co-guarantor, which my son Kai did that, that I will appear on the 1st of February for a pre-trial hearing. So, you know, I guess it depends on what the will of the people is by that time, you know, if the, the will of the people is still supporting this corporate fraud and has the expectation that I have to do that or else I should be penalised some more by the corporate fraud, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I, you know, I don't know. But uh, we just need to keep our hearts in the right place and I want to thank all of you who, you know, had your hearts with me and prayed and wanted me home because, yeah, it really was like a miracle, <laughs> an actual miracle. I really feel that. And, um, yeah, they shipped me from the watch house to Yatla Women's Prison last night and, you know, essentially under threat that they'd revoked bail and I was going to be put in the cage indefinitely, however, however long they want to keep you in the cage is how the system works apparently. Um, so I was just, yeah, beyond traumatised and terrified at not having any way of knowing how I would possibly cope with that because I do not do well in a cage and it's actually really inhumane. It's a draconian torture. Humans are not meant to be kept in cages. Uh, but while I was there in 
um, the prison, you know, front office being processed. I did hear that um, Kate Rayley is still there on D Block, and oh my God, Kate! Oh, oh my God! We need to get Kate out. So, if anyone watching this has, you know, contact with people in the prison, we want to work with the prison to get communication with Kate and to make a plan to get her out so she can start healing from the trauma of being kept in the cage for so long because it's too long. She needs help to get out and there's people out here that want to help her. So, you know, please um, contact us. Yeah, let's get Kate home and let's get Takara home. We'll do an update with Donna, but Takara is still being held and Takara is being held in torturous isolation um, situation also. So she's in a house, Donna heard, with another little five-year-old who's also very traumatised and, you know, um, that it's just stressful for, for Takara and the other little kid because they've both been taken away from their natural families. Uh, Takara just wants to come home, she, you know, she just wants her mum and her family. She wants to be able to talk to them. They have removed her phone, removed the internet. They're keeping her in a house without a clock. So she's like just, you know, in this little isolated control bubble, which has got nothing to do with well-being or Takara's best interest. And Donna's beyond traumatised at this point and just desperate. Um, you know, for Takara to be returned to her family, if not to Donna, to her parents, um, just so that they can look after her, so they can love her, they can make sure she's getting the food that she needs, the right nutrition. Because she went through cancer when she was little, you know, her mum's really, um, you know, put in place like a, a special, you know, way of looking after her to keep her well, you know, that only her mum and her family know what they went through and what she's been through and what she needs. Um, and, you know, DCP have just ripped her from her actual life support system and put her in this completely foreign, clinical, um, controlled, out-of-home care and are just torturing Takara and her family, and it's it's not okay. The all of the people involved have been notified of the truth and been instructed to return Takara. So they're all in violation of the real law of the land here. And the longer this goes on, the worse it's going to be for everybody who's involved in this ongoing crime of the highest order. So we, the people need to get our collective will around this issue of DCP and taking back our power as a community, you know, our, our responsibility for overseeing what's going on, what's going on in the youth court. And when I was there sitting out the front before I got abducted by the gang of SAFO officers again, um, I was talking to Kevin and, you know, remembering when I was there last with Mel um, and she was out the front screaming to everyone that, you know, they've stolen my baby, the pedophiles have got my baby, uh, this is child trafficking going on in here, and it, you know, all falls on deaf ears. The social worker came out and spoke to us out the front and basically said, you know, what's going on in here is evil, it's terrible, the children are not okay, the families are not okay, none of this is okay, go get the media, bring the community, we need help, we need help. And I've been trying to do that ever since. I've been trying to, you know, like wake everyone up to say, um, come on down here, people, we need to put our community awareness on what's going on and have a look, get some community accountability um, happening here. And, you know, as yet that hasn't happened and we really need to make that our collective community priority and get child protection, real child protection, back at the heart of everything that we do. So that's, that's what I'm holding in my heart. That's where I'm at at the moment. I'm not okay. We're not okay. Toby is not okay. We're 
like stressed to our eyeballs and feeling, you know, very under attack from all aspects of the fraud that wants to snuff us out because we're like, you know, this little light of truth that they don't want anyone to know exists. They want to get rid of that so that people don't know that they've got an option to be free in the real world, which we do when we bring ourselves into the stand, into standing with the truth about who we are and where we are, you know, in our creator's kingdom. And we are the children of the divine and of our mother earth. And we're meant to be free. We were, you know, born free to be free, to be co-creating the most beautiful world that we can imagine together, like actually heaven on earth. We can have that. So why would we settle for anything less? The only reason is that, you know, these cult members up here have been doing very well for themselves out of managing us like a human herd, like cattle that they farm and enslave and keep in cages and use magical tokens to control and manipulate. The way that they have been treating us and the way that they have tricked and trained us to treat each other is terrible, completely inhumane. And we've got to get back to, you know, who we are at the heart of our shared humanity and being brothers and sisters, you know, in our one human family and treating each other, you know, how we would want to be treated in the other person's shoes. You know, that we dissolve all this illusion of the hierarchy and these special authorities that can go around treating people terribly and thinking that that's okay. Like, hurting people is never lawful. Never. Like, don't go around hurting people. Protecting yourself is okay. That's a different thing. If someone's actually attacking you, you have the right to defend yourself. But we don't go around, you know, assaulting people or forcing our will on people or using torture and blackmail and manipulation to coerce people into things. None of that is lawful ever. Like just, you know, treat people with respect and kindness and deal in truth. Just tell each other the truth. And, yeah, we will figure it all out together. We'll work it all out together. So thank you for... Um, keeping you free, Team Humanity. And, yeah, let's get to Cara home now. Let's get Kate home. Let's get Pete home. Let's get all of the children being kept in the youth detention centres home. Let's get it all sorted out. Let's have a full review throughout all the different departments of, you know, all of the systems everywhere that people are being held, let's make sure that they're being looked after, respected, loved, looked after, treated with humanity and kindness and that we're all helping each other. Let's just all help each other. And then we can turn this all around and, you know, be, be healing instead of being trapped in this ongoing trauma because at the moment we're still in the trauma. Some people are still in denial, you know, can't even um, be honest about how traumatic what is really going on is, and it is really traumatic, but we have to go through it, admit what it is, um, and then from there we can co-create our new way forward and start healing, and that's, that's what I'm holding for us all. I love you.